أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم ولعن أعداءهم السلام عليك يا ناصر الحسين ويا سفير الحسين يا مسلم بن عقيل ورحمة الله وبركاته I was thinking about this great man the cousin of Imam Hussein Muslim ibn Aqil, the one who Imam Hussein wrote about him to Kufians that I am sending to you my brother, my cousin, and the trusted one amongst my progeny. وَإِنِّي بَاعِثٌ إِلَيْكُمْ بِأَخِي وَابْنِ عَمِّي وَثِقَتِي مِنْ أَهْلِ بَيْتِي مُسْلِمِ بْنَ عَقِيلِ So Imam Hussain alayhi salam described him with these descriptions that he is Imam Hussain's brother, cousin, and the trusted one amongst his progeny. So very high status person that Imam Hussain alayhi salam trusted and gave him very sensitive responsibility to go to Kufa and to actually evaluate Kufians and whether they really want Imam Hussain alayhi salam to migrate to them to help them and they are really willing uh, for Imam Hussein to be in Kufa to actually um, uh, revolt against Umayyad and Yazid ibn Muawiyah. What happened? Muslim ibn Aqil went to Kufa. They paid allegiance to him and they asked him to ask Imam Hussein to come to Kufa. At last, Muslim ibn Aqil was killed. Not only killed, he was killed while he was thirsty. And he was beheaded actually. And then his body, they dragged his body in Kufa streets and alleys. So, the revolution of Muslim ibn Aqil in Kufa was ended with him being brutally murdered and killed by Ibn Marjana Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, the tyrant that Yazid ibn Muawiyah appointed to be the governor of Kufa. Some people I saw and read, when they come to analyze the revolution of Muslim ibn Aqil and what, they, what he did in Kufa, they actually went to a conclusion, jumped to a conclusion, that the Kufa did not have a strong leader. And that's why Muslim ibn Aqil was killed. And I don't know what does he mean by that. Does he mean that Muslim ibn Aqil wasn't a strong man? Or the Kufa did not have a strong leader amongst Kufians? Either he meant Muslim ibn Aqil or Kufians, leaders of Shia and Kufa. Um, this, this idea is totally false. Why? Because, of course, Muslim ibn Aqil was a strong leader. Of course, he was not only strong, he was trusted, fully trust, trusted by Imam Hussein salam. And that's why Imam Hussein has chosen him to be uh, his, his ambassador to Kufians. But the thing is, the battle and dispute between Umayyad and Hashemite, between Imam Hussein salam and Yazin, 
was actually a sacred battle. In other words, Imam Hussein actually revolted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if someone wants to revolt for the sake of Allah, for the sake of Rasulullah, for the sake of religion, he cannot do whatever he desires to reach his goals. Why? Because he need to be pious in every single steps he takes. And when Hani ibn Urwa invited Ibn Marjana, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, the killer of Muslim ibn Aqil to his house and asked Muslim ibn Aqil to hide behind the curtain and come and assassin Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Muslim ibn Aqil did not do so. Why? Because he said after that that oh honey I wanted to do that however I reminded myself or I remembered a narration that I've heard the Prophet saying al -imanu qayyad al -fatk, aw al -imanu qayyad al -fatk, that the faith will fasten someone from assassinating even his enemy of course if a war happens the, the Ahlul Bayt might um, have a reaction they will protect themselves but before that to assassin someone no they don't accept that idea why because the whole idea of uh, their revolution is to actually um, let human beings live with dignity and follow the Holy Quran and the saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And betraying someone is something banned in Islam. Islam will not accept someone to betray someone else. No way. And Muslim Na'apil felt that if he kills Ibn Marjana on that time, he's actually not following the footsteps of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. So one of the reasons the revolution of Muslim ended with him being murdered that he did not want to follow his desires and we can fully understand why Imam Hussein has chosen Muslim Ibn Aqil to create a small Karbala before the day of Ashura in Kufa you know I was thinking about that Muslim Ibn Aqil salam, has created small Karbala on the 8th of the Hajjah, on the day of Arafah, in Kufa, on ye 60, before ye 61 and Ashura. Why? Because he actually followed the footsteps of Rasulullah sallallahu As Imam Hussein once told one of his companions when he asked him, this is Shimr ibn al-Jawshan, I can kill him now. Imam Hussein replied, Akrah and Abda'ahum I don't like to start this fight. I will fight back if they want to fight me. But I don't like to start this fight. So, Muslim ibn Aqil alayhi salam did not want to start the fight, did not want to betray even Ibn Marjana. And that's why he was ended. He ended being killed by Ibn Marjana. So he was killed. He was alone, killed alone, like Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He was gharib. When he was killed, he was thirsty. He couldn't drink a drop of water. And actually, before he was beheaded, 
He cried. He did not bend down, but he cried. He did not say, Assalamu alaikum, ya Amir al Mu'mineen, to Ibn Marjana. He said, You are not my commander, you are not my Imam. But he cried. The killer of him told him, Okay, what you wanted is something big. And now, You've been captured. You are in prison of us who want to kill you. It's not suitable for you to cry. What was his reply? He said, I'm not crying for myself. The killer said, okay, then you're crying for whom? He said, I'm crying for Imam al-Hussein. Abki ala al-Hussein wa ala al Hussein. Because I wrote to them to come to Kufa because they paid allegiance to me to defend you, O oh, Imam Hussein, and now they betrayed me. They left me alone. It was lifted with no one but Hani ibn Arwa and some other people. Mukhtar ibn Yusuf al Thaqafi was put in prison. He couldn't help Muslim ibn Aqil apparently. So he cried for Imam Hussein. He was killed while he was thirsty, and then they actually throw his body from above the castle. They broke his bones as the enemy of Imam al Hussein broke Imam al Hussein's bones after they killed him when they used horses actually to break the chest and the bones of Imam al Hussein. And then they dragged Muslim al in Kufa's alleys and streets. So he created a small Karbala before the day of Ashura. While he was alone, while he was thirsty, while he did not surrender himself to the enemy. He fought against them until they actually betrayed him. Betrayed him and took him as a prisoner to Abidullah ibn Ziyad. So he was a strong leader, a very strong leader, but a leader that wants to follow Quran and Ahlul Bayt, Quran and the Prophet. So I believe the revolution of Muslim ibn Aqil, or actually revolution of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, started with Muslim ibn Aqil. Started with Muslim ibn Aqil and ended by Imam Zain al-Abideen delivering and Zain al-Kubra delivering the speeches on the castle and palace of Yazid ibn Muawiyah on Sham. Started with Muslim ibn Aqil and ended by Imam Zain al-Abideen and Zain al-Kubra. So the whole, if we see the, the picture of this revolution, we can feel how successful that re revolution was. And is actually, till now. So we cannot say that Muslim Naqil wasn't a strong leader to lead the community on Kufa, or even Hani ibn Arwa, who was killed because he protected Muslim ibn Aqil. Salamu alayhi alayhi. So the Kufa had very strong leaders amongst Shia. But the problem is, if you are pious, you cannot do anything you desire to reach your goal. Actually, you have to follow the Quran and Ahlul Bayt. As you know, when Muawiyah started the battle, of Safin, he banned Imam Ali's army from drinking water. When Imam Ali took back the river and the water, okay, he told his companion to allow Muawiyah's army to take water from the river. Why? Because he said, we are fighting 
to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our revolution, the dispute between us and Umayyad, it's not for dunya, it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Muslim ibn Aqil actually is the winner in the battle of Kufa. Why? Because until now, we remember him and praise him. And until now, we remember his killer and enemy and we curse him. Why? Because Muslim ibn Aqil was someone that actually embodied and manifested the teaching of Quran and the teaching of Prophet and the teaching of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. Assalamun alayka ya Sayyidi wa Mawlai ya Muslim ibn Aqil. Assalamun alayka ya Safir al Hussein. Salamun min Allahi alayka ibn Amm al Hussein. Salamun min Allahi alayk. Ayyuh al Gharib al Atshan al Shaheed. Salamun min Allahi alayk. Ma baqi al Dahr. Wa ila abad al Abidin. Wa la an Allahu a'da'ak wa zalimik. Wa qatilik abad al Abidin wa dahak al Dahirin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammadin wa ajjil farajahum wa la'ana adha.